Hello and welcome to Follow the Boat vlog. This is our special series of questions in which we answer your questions for one day, every day, for a week. So these fall outside of our normal weekly vlog. If you don't know who we are, we are Liz and Jamie and we live on board a boat and have been doing so for the last 10 years. So check out in the description a link to our playlist. Go and find out what we're all about. But today we are going to talk about fighting. Relationships generally. This is a therapy session, isn't it? This is where we get a few things off our chest and, and talk about the things that annoy each other. This came about because we've had quite a few questions um, over the last six months or so from people who are wanting to do what we're doing and a little bit concerned about how you get on with each other in such a small, confined space. Paul Jolly on YouTube said, can you tell us about the bad points, i.e. real things in life not usually talked about? And Terry Landis gave us another couple of uh, questions, which were, what, if anything, do you fight about on the boat? And what happens to couples who don't work out so well? Perhaps one or the other then carries on solo sailing. Does this happen more often than not? Mmm, food for thought. Yes. Well, of course, we never fight. Yes, we do. I think we do. Yeah, I think we do. I think I, like, I just lied. I never lie either, and that's not true either. Um, well... This is actually quite a current theme uh, among YouTube channels is this idea of false positivity. Most people when they watch a view YouTube vlog don't want to see negativity. They switch onto YouTube channels for some positivity, which is what we're all about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think that's the human condition. We always want to, all of us want to be cheered up, want to live in a lovely, fluffy, ha happy, happy, honey, honey world don't we <laughs> uh, but of course I think all of us know that the world really isn't like that yes you really just see the edited highlights and the high life of our relationship aboard a very small boat I say very small boat that's relatively speaking just in case you don't know our boat is 43 foot long and four meters wide it has 10 years of personal possessions and a cat so it's a pretty confined space. And don't forget, of course, that we are together 24 hours a day. So it can be difficult. And we are the first to admit that we are quite good bickerers. We bicker pretty much from morning till night about everything. Interestingly, we were uh, at a bar only the other night, weren't we, with another couple. And we had a very funny conversation, which pretty much boiled down to the two men, myself and uh, this other guy, agreeing that the two women, yourself and his wife, take ages getting ready before we go out. I don't know what it is. I don't know why you have to faff around and take so long to get ready. But uh, it was a common theme. And uh, you notice how I'm kind of like niggling her. I'm trying to raise... You see, the interesting thing about that is that they both get really pissed off because we appear to take so long. But as she was pointing out, she, they, they have children. So he gets himself ready and he gets the dinghy ready, but she has to get herself ready and the two children, and all the bits that go he together with all he those He did not things. know. He said that he would get himself and the two children ready. She didn't agree with him, though. You, you've conven conveniently forgotten that bit. No, and she was just busy trying to work out what to wear. And my point is that when I'm given five minutes warning that we have to be in the dinghy, uh, that's not enough time for me to get ready. So as she and I are both saying, if you tell us that we have to be in the dinghy and on the way to somewhere by 7.30, we'll do all the things we need to be ready by 7.30. And anyway, she and I both think, what's the bloody point? We, we, the whole point of living on a boat is there are no deadlines. If it takes an extra five minutes, is it going to kill you to sit in the cockpit and file your nails while the other one gets ready you know just relax man <laughs> i'm going to play this video clip back to you when we next have this argument it's not an argument i think what i'm trying to say i think what we're trying to say is that little things like that can niggle you and can annoy you and we've worked out we've knocked the corners off each other over the years and we've sort of now you know it, it, it all sort of works quite well but just by saying these things out loud at the time gets it immediately off your chest. There's no kind of harbouring resentment. There's no sort of 
simmering, steaming fury with the other one. It's all dealt with, it's out of the way. Although, although there was that time in 2014, do you remember when uh, you refused to do the washing up? You see, it's the same things, and these are the same things as when you're on land. It doesn't matter if you're in a boat that's 43 foot long, or if you're in an enormous townhouse in London or New York or wherever it might be. Partners always annoy you. It happens. And we could film it and we could put it on here, but I think it might be a bit boring. Well, I think we're too busy bickering to pick up the camera and, and film it. And anyway, you don't want to see that. Well, why don't you just fucking kill them and stop fucking photographing? On a more serious note, we are aware of couples who have sadly split up. And I remember when we first started sailing in the Eastern Med, there was a sort of standing joke that the best place to buy a boat was Gibraltar. Because when retired couples who, after 40 years of working, went off and bought their boat of their dreams... In the UK. In the UK, and sailed down across the Bay of Biscay and had a an horrendous time and got as far as Portugal and around the corner and realised... They actually hated spending time with each other. And so one of them would jump off the boat and the other one would have to sell it. It does happen, sometimes divorced, but sometimes they just both decided that this really wasn't a life for them. Another one that we see quite often is grandchildren. And so when a couple retire, maybe their children are maybe aged 25, 30 years old, they go off sailing and then after a couple of years, their children have their own children and suddenly they have grandchildren. And of course, when you live so far away, you want to see your grandchildren. It's uh, particularly the women, isn't it? It is. It I mean, really it, is the women. It's a generalisation, yeah. but on the whole, it does seem to it's be... our own experience, observations. The women love being grandmas and they just want to spend time with their grandchildren the men yes they want to be grandfathers but they're quite happy to remain on the boat and just nip back now and again but that's not what happens with a lot of women does it if the relationship is one-sided on the boat it's normally the man that wants to go off sailing and takes his wife with him not always not always but in the majority of cases. Yeah, she's going along with it rather than being really enthusiastic about it. And that's a point that needs to be made, isn't it? Mm. It needs to be something that you're both invested in. I think if you're just doing it for the other one, it's going to accelerate and accentuate the problems and the differences. It's not going to work. So Terry did say, does this happen more often than not, i.e. do um, do couples get divorced when they're living this life more often than not? I'd say it doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. So one of the way rounds these fractious relationships and the arguments is to have shared interests, I suppose. Uh, Obviously, Liz and I have a shared interest, which relates to doing this filming and the vlogging and the editing, which is a passion that we enjoy and we share together. And it's morphed over the years. We started just with a simple blog. Um, You wrote most of it and you did most of the photos and then I got interested in it as well because we're both a little bit creative and then I started writing, taking the writing seriously and you, you took the photography seriously and then we did podcasts and then we moved on to editing and doing videos which we just love. Um, So when we're not sailing and doing all the normal things that you do, we're doing one or the other. Doing this right now here on this beautiful, beautiful island, we're talking to you guys and making this film for you. Well, that's another thing we enjoy doing is jumping in the dinghy, dinghy, taking it ashore and going for a nice walk up into the hills, walking through villages, meeting the local people. It's another common thing that we share. Again, we know couples who one may prefer doing that and leaves the other on board. Uh, pursuing their own interests. Yeah, there are people that we know who who are mad keen on nature. We have a a couple we know who are great bird watchers and really on a boat it's the most fantastic thing to do because everywhere you go there's extraordinary bird life. Um, They do these things together, so it is a shared common interest. And, of course, something else that we see is people who don't have interests who end up spending every night down the bar and become bar flies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, not necessarily alcoholics to begin with at all, but it's just the way it goes, isn't it? Yeah. So, to conclude, we may live this charmed life, but it's not without its downs as well. We do argue, we do bicker, and in that respect, we are no different to any other couple. Just because we live this lifestyle doesn't mean that we avoid those situations. And the other thing we would say is find interests, preferably shared interests, but at least an interest 
that each person will have that they can pursue outside just being a yachty and the sailing. Because 90% of the time you will be on your boat at anchor somewhere. So you need to have something to keep you occupied. It's not 90% of the time, it's 85. Okay, that's the end of question two. Tomorrow we're going to answer question three in our mini-series of your questions. If you've got any questions, then please do put them in the comments. We are going to be posting this up at 0900 hours EST. That's 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is, what, 1 o'clock in the afternoon? uh, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock UTC. When we put it up, we're going to be sitting by our computers for the next hour or so and answer any of your questions that you have. So please, fire away, and we're here to answer more of your questions. And don't forget, hit that subscription button. Thank you.